Hey garden friends, welcome back to the greenhouse in flower patch. Oh, wait a minute. This pumpkin's looking a little nasty. Now it's time to throw it into the compost bin. It's been pretty in here, but I have a little compost bin down there. Out to the compost it goes. Um, yeah, and it actually it probably will grow for me. I usually get volunteers that way of the little pumpkins I have in the past and it's been fun. Those two up there look like they're doing good. Okay, what was I about to say? Oh, I wanted to fess up a mistake I made. And I wanted to talk about today, about someone asked me to list like the 10 best winter sowing flowers that I like to grow. And I, I started writing down my list and it's way more than that. But we'll get going and I will go ahead and um, treat some soil and I'll tell you why in a bit. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and or share with your friends. Someone might need to learn this so they don't make the same mistakes I do. Alrighty, so mistake. If you notice right in here, let me see if it'll focus for you right here, is these are the tubs, let me see here's the other one, that I planted my Super Bissima petunias in. And they sprouted, they germinated. Um, and then so did all the fungus gnats. Now, I have said before, and I even have a post on it, how to take care of fungus gnats, that you should either pasteurize potting soil that has been sitting out damp. Uh, like I said, uh, if I had done this in the summer and this was dry and during the hot weather, I wouldn't have had a problem. But because it was sitting out in the damp, and cool, the fungus gnats flourished in it. And even though when I was setting these up, they um, didn't fly out, the eggs were in there. <clears throat> and when I put them in on my light rack, they, they hatched and just had a good old time and devastated my petunias. So those will have to be done over. My wave petunias that were pelleted, I didn't have as much of an issue. I don't know if it's because they were pelleted or if it's just I don't know. In fact, there's one uh, fungus not crawling across the surface. Uh, what? But these ones didn't make it. So those will have to be started over. So I brought them back out here. I have a tray of soil that I am going to treat. And that is where this comes in handy. This is electric teapot. I had to unplug my heater so that I could do that. Now I am going to treat the soil in this one. Now I don't know how tough. I, I'm pretty sure this will go through when I get the water pretty hot. We'll, we'll make it and not melt away. If, if not, then I made a big mistake and I'll have to toss the whole thing. But I'm just going to try it. Um, I had already filled this up before I found out about the fungus gnats being so bad. And um, yeah, this one, I should put this whole thing in my oven at, I can't remember what the temperature is, 200 for like half an hour and it would kill out the nits. But I'm just gonna go ahead and use this either for winter sowing. It doesn't seem to be a problem when I winter sow with them. I don't know if it's because being outside, the extra cold, or I don't know. It, it's just not an issue. But I could also pour boiling water in this. It's just, it makes a mucky mess. And it's harder to put in these trays when it's so wet. So I thought for some of the things that I would normally put in here, um, I went ahead and at the dollar store, I found this for $5. And it has pelleted seed starter, so it has the little chunks in there that when it gets wet, it pumps back up. I'm pretty sure, let me read it for you. Um, seed starter includes one watertight tray, 36 cell plastic insert pre-filled with quality seed starting mix. Okay, so that's a... Um, what it, not sanitized, well, whatever. It's sanitized so it doesn't have the nits in it, but they're so dry. Now, seed starting mix does not have the nutrients that the potting soil does, so you will have to start feeding your seedlings sooner than you would if you had started with a seed star, or with a, um, potting soil. And usually seed starting mix is much more expensive, but I just thought this would be neat to try for people who don't have all the setup and just wanted to start seeds. And like I said, this came from the Dollar Store. I think this was Dollar General, but I've also seen them at Dollar Tree, etc. Now this one, 
This one is a self-watering one, Burpee Self-Watering 72 Seed Starting System. And this one has a continuous hydration, which reduces need for frequent watering. So it has a mat that it soaks up from, which I thought it would be kind of neat to try. And it has these little pellets in it. When I open and, and sew this, I will bring you along. So it's got these little compressed pellets in it. So ideal for most herbs, flowers, and vegetables. Improved germination and root growth. So I'm gonna try that. I thought about it. Now this one, I got at Tractor Supply and I don't remember what it cost. Okay, so I can hear my water getting hot. Not quite hot enough. It's bubbling. But I'm even going to go ahead and treat these in here. I put these through the dishwasher, so it should be okay to put the hot water through them, and then it'll kill all the fungus, gnats, what have you, and um, then be done. Then I can reuse it. Okay. So my favorite flowers to winter sow. That is what we were going to talk about. We'll get this all taken care of with the water and... I wanted to share with you, look, I made a list and they're all over the place, but I, there's some um, I've already showed you. Yes, the record light's on. Uh, there are some that I've already started. I've started um, Echinacea here uh, on the channel, Yarrow, Achalia. I did that last winter. I showed you how to winter sow Yarrow. Uh, Larkspur, I did. Now somebody asked, and I did mention it in the video, but I must not have said it clear enough is they asked me how do I plant them out uh, like the poppies that's what the one I did the poppies let me mark these off that I mentioned so I don't repeat myself is um, because they don't really like root disturbance and that's one reason why people do not recommend starting them indoors or what have you um, I just take a clump because I really sow a lot of the poppies in there I don't separate each seedling out I just take a clump of the soil, maybe a two inch by two inch square or one inch by one inch square. And I just, um, and when I do sow that, or not sow them, but when I do plant them out this coming spring, I will share it with you. But just to explain, um, and then the whole chunk, there may be three or four poppies in that chunk, put the whole chunk out in the soil, in the garden bed and let them go. And knowing they will reseed themselves, it doesn't bother me that maybe a couple might not make it. I don't cut any off. It's survival of the fittest, and it goes from there. Now, some people say that they will compete for nutrients, and what, maybe they do, but the one that makes it's tough, and it will just keep on going and do a beautiful job of growing and then reseeding itself the next fall or during the summer. I just had showed on my Instagram, I have a poppy coming up out there that's now under the snow. And it was one that reseeded itself. Now I'm going to sweep some of this away. I should have done this sooner. My tabletop, if you didn't know here, is just an old door. And um, it's got a big dip in it. Now I probably should clean it off and flip it over and then maybe it would go the other direction. But okay, so back to my flowers. I did uh, the Delphiniums, Larkspur, Yarrow. Um, yeah, that was number 16 on my list here. And I showed you the poppies. You could also winter sow sweet peas. I do them right out in the garden, um, but you gotta be careful. It depends on how much rain or moisture and how, um, if you have clay or whatever, they can drown or just rot in the ground. But um, winter sowing them, they, they are a bit tougher than if you were to put them. I have also sown them in these type containers. They, it's said, it is said that they like to get their roots longer you know, I didn't have longer pots. I do now, let me see, I have these ones now, so they're a little bit longer. And then I have also put them in the four inch pots that were taller, like three or four of them at a time. And then I'll just put the whole um, four inch pot, open, uh, dump them out of it and put them in the ground um, when it's time. Now I've had them, some fall onto the top of my pots in here where I, and I didn't even realize it and they've germinated on top of the soil and continued on growing. So sweet peas are pretty tough as long as you don't get it too warm. Now here in my garden, it can go from cold, cold, cold in May to hot. So it's kind of tough unless they've gotten a good head start for them to make it. Let me see, I don't want it too, too hot. Okay, that's probably perfect. Um, 
So sweet peas is another one that I like to winter sow. I haven't done any winter sowing of those yet. I will probably in a month or so do it in here and put them in the four inch pots, the taller four inch pots. Let me see if I've got one of the tall. Well, this one isn't the ones I use. I use the plastic ones I have left over, but you see how big that is and how tall that is. And I'll, I'll sew them in the containers like that. And um, yeah, then it has room for the roots or what have you. But even the ones I've done in here and then put out in the garden, they did just fine. So I don't have to care, uh, buy anything like root trainers or anything special. Just do it in a recycled pot. They work fine. So other things you can winter sow. I have winter sowed successfully. Lupins. I did put some lupins out. Did I put them in my recent ones? I may have. Lupins. Snapdragons. I was looking. I had gotten some snapdragon seeds and I can't find them. I will. But snapdragons is another one I'm going to put out. Now, I have mentioned in my, where I showed you overwintering my banana, that I am really leaning into winter sowing this year rather than starting seeds on my light rack in the house. I am going to do some in the house. But rather than doing so many in there, I'm really doing a lot more winter sowing because it's more hands off and we may need to travel. And um, when you sow your seeds in the house, unless you know you are gonna be home for the duration, um, yeah, you need to be mindful of that. So if I was gonna be gone, I'd have to have someone come and check them all the time. And it's kind of, you know, sketchy because not everybody knows how to take care of seedlings. Alrighty, so let me go down the list. Daisies, I did um, sow some of my crazy daisies. Penstemon is a really good one, and it's a California native here. There's varieties. Black-eyed Susans. Now, black-eyed Susans and daisies, the ones I have in my garden, receive themselves very, very well. So I don't always sow them, like, specifically. I will do some, because I got one called Sputnik, that it was really interesting shape, and then Cherokee something. And I got a double one. That I had a double one before, absolutely loved it. And somehow, well, when it receded, it may have crossed with the singles and then didn't come back double. But Black Eyed Susans is another one. Foxgloves. Foxgloves do beautifully. I brought some out here to go ahead and sew this Gloxneflora blend. This is one that will, well, foxgloves are one of those flowers that will readily re seed themselves. I have a video and a blog post of me reseeding the ones I have and how I do it. And so that's, I'll probably link that in the description box. I will link it. I'll make myself a note. Link, I'll write it right here. So foxgloves is another good winter sewing. Echinacea, I showed you my echinacea. I did the white swan. I will link all of these. Hollyhocks, I just did some hollyhocks perfect for winter sowing. And they also are one that really receives themselves. And in that, I tell you how I deal with rust. I get rust terribly. It's not a big deal. It affects the leaves, not really the flowers. And I just I take them off. Okay, while I'm talking about that, I'm going to stop here and I'm going to treat my soil. So here's how I'm treating it. Like I said, I'm hoping these this container holds up. I'll do a couple and see how it does. Let me see, let me point you down a little bit and then you can see better. What I'm doing, try not to have it looking up my nose. Okay, we in there, good? Good enough, so here's my container. This is the one that has the silicone base on the bottoms. And I'm just putting a little bit of water in each one. Now I'm gonna see, see how it's doing. What's okay? Yeah, it's doing fine. Okay. So the boiling water kills not only the fungus gnats but also the eggs. And though they can reinfest it if there is a lot in the house, they will get caught on the yellow traps I have in there. I, I don't anticipate them getting reinfected because I'm going to be more careful. Now, I don't want it to sit in the hot water because even though the 
silicone made it through the initial. I don't want it. I'm going to put the, this hot water in there. I don't want to take the chance of having it sit in there. So, okay. So that's still steaming, so that took care of that. So I'm going to set this on top of here, and I'm going to pour the hot water through it. These are the recycled trays that I used. So that is good. And I will also do it in these. I had sown some seeds in these. I had leftover echinacea seeds. In fact, it looked like a couple sitting on top of it there. But these also got infested with the, with the fungus gnats. So you can see all the fungus gnats that got caught on here, and these came out of those trays. So I don't know, it might not be focusing, but if you see all the little black spots, that's the, that's the fungus gnats, I'm gonna throw it in the garbage. Alrighty, as I said, it was just me getting lazy. I know the potting soil will be infested this time of year, sitting outside, etc. So let me see if I can see any flying out of there. Nope, they're dead. Okay. All right, so this would take a whole lot more. So I probably would, since this made it through, whatever I put this in, if I'm gonna sew them in, take them indoors, I will pour the hot water through them. And that will take care of that. And those will be fine. Once that cools off, I can sow my seeds in there and continue on without those pesky fungus gnats. All righty, excuse me. So we did hollyhocks, bachelor buttons is another good, those ones I also can sow directly out in the garden in fall and they will come back. They reseed themselves for me very readily. That is the most beautiful color blue if you get the blue ones. So those ones I sow. In fact, I'm gonna sow some of those today. Um, scabiosa, I've had hit and miss with scabiosa. So it could have been, you know, just the year. I haven't planted any more this year. I probably should. It's a really easy flower, but it's not one. I have so many. I have to pick and choose and stop, you know, doing the shotgun blast of everything and trying to lean into plants, flowers that thrive, reseed themselves, drought tolerant, um, and that just kind of make it on their own. And I'm sure if I did scabiosa that they would be one of those plants, but anyways, it just, like I said, I have so many. Sweet alyssum. Now that is one that I usually sow them, or they come back by themselves. I sow them into, and I, thought I had one in here, but I shook it out. But I have a self-watering planter box. And um, last year or the year before, and I will link it, let me write this down. Link self-sown petunias. I did a video on how to fill your window boxes for free. And it was when I had wave petunias in it the prior year. I'd let them just be it once the winter started. I didn't take them out, nothing. And then come spring, I kind of cut them back close or during the winter. Um, I didn't pull them out, cut them close to the soil. And if there was any space I needed to add a little bit of soil, I would. But those petunias had reseeded and came back. And it just was beautiful. And they, they come up so thickly that I dig them out, pull them out and replant them in other window boxes. So it's like I have a little seed starting tray there and alyssum also starts that way for me. But so that sweet alyssum will winter sow very well. I just bought a seed packet at the dollar store. It was a big, it was a box for $2. And I'm going to, um, I'm gonna winter sow some of those, but I'm also gonna direct sow. I've never direct sown sweet alyssum, but I was just gonna try it because it was a nice box pretty well filled uh, for $2. So I thought it couldn't hurt. So pansies, pansies are also something that you can winter sow. And then you have something early spring to put out. Um, I usually buy pansies in February and just put them out and then they do well the rest of the winter and they bring me color. In fact, I have some right out here that are under the snow. Um, I was gonna put them in my centerpiece garden, the center garden, circle garden in the um, secret garden. And then they would be there. They're real pretty purple for when the daffodils come through. So Cosmos, now Cosmos is hit and miss for me. 
um, Cosmos will sometimes reseed themselves, but it's like a ton of seed had to fall before that would happen. And Cosmos, they kind of like it warmer before they germinate. So they would be something I would wait a little further, like maybe in March I'll winter sow those. Columbine, um, Columbine is a good one to winter sow. But I have so much of it, and it reseeds itself so well that I haven't bothered doing any more recently. But it is one that works. Alrighty. So how many was that? Um, butterfly weed. That's another one. Uh, most of the milkweeds. I've even had tropical milkweed. Was it tropical? It was a red. And then when I looked it up, it supposedly was the tropical or perennial milkweed. And um, that reseeded itself. Now, while I know it didn't live over the winter, was because where it came up was in a different spot than where it had been planted. So it wasn't like it came back, because it gets too cold here for that type of milkweed. But I had planted two of them the prior year and had so many monarch larvae or caterpillars. And I had so many monarchs that year. Um, whereas I've been, it's been very hit and miss here for me seeing monarch butterflies. Even the swallowtails have been a lot less. I used to have years where I had dozens and dozens, and it's not been happening the last few years, so that's a little scary to me. But I want to attract them. I want to feed them. Um, like I said, excuse me. I want to feed them, and I, I want them to be around. Now, everything. I don't use pesticides. I don't use any kinds of sprays, even the kind, some people will use kitchen ingredients like, um, what is it? Oh, garlic, garlic spray. Now garlic spray, yes, it's organic. Yes, you can make it yourself, but it is broad spectrum, which means it will kill everything. So don't think because it comes out of your kitchen, it is necessarily safe to use in your garden. Just a heads up, because I see a lot of things posted in Pinterest, on YouTube, on Instagram as these gardens say things and they think people, people think because you bring it out of your kitchen that it's safe to use in the garden. That includes vinegar. You know, there's a whole lot that you need to research before you use things on your plants as far as them being dangerous to the ecosystem. Alrighty then, okay, like I said, butterfly weed. I have more I want to start. And I was going to um, share with you a few things. Now, I said I wasn't going to buy seed, but um, I had some ground covers. I wanted to do, I want to do a rock garden. And so I knew I wanted some Aubrietas, which is also called rock cress. So I did buy these from outside, outsidepride.com, a seed company. And um, you see these flowers on here. Let me put my face up here so it'll focus. But... These make beautiful plants, blooming plants. This is, that's a lighter lavender, and here's a deeper purple one for a rock garden and ground covers. And this is a trailing. This is um, Silver Falls Dichondra. Now, this is really expensive if you buy it at the garden center. And mine, it doesn't overwinter here. I've even tried overwintering it inside the greenhouse and it didn't make it. It got that snow mold or greenhouse mold. Um, I think I have fought it back with the spray I told you about. It's rosemary and clove oil spray. I buy it from a company here in California and it's you dilute it and I've been using it in here. Now I sprayed it first on this lavender and though I see little bits of it where I sprayed it, it has fought it back, but I see I need to spray it again. So um, I'll do that right now or I will forget. So it's just something I have to keep up with. Now, the only thing I can think of is it happens in here because it's not getting direct sun. And so with the damp air and not enough light, because I get it no other time of year, only in January, February, do I have to, to spray for it. So that's the only thing I can think of. Um, let me see over here. Yeah, some of my geraniums had it earlier and I sprayed them and they seem to be doing okay right now. But that snow mold or greenhouse mold will kill everything. And yeah, and some things um, like those pansies, I took, they had them in here and I took them out there because they were starting to get it. 
And I thought, I don't want to risk it, and I know it doesn't grow outside. So I put them outside. They're tough. They can handle the snow and cold. So it was either snow or cold or, or snow mold. So out there they went. So that is my list of my winter sowing seeds. I am, because the um, rock crest it says it germinates at 65, um, I think it's a good candidate to try winter sowing. So I'm going to get me some jugs out here. I'm going to fill them up with my potting soil and I'm going to winter sow part of the seeds. There were so many seeds in those packets that, um, yeah, it's going to be, where'd I set them? I probably set them down when I was yapping and I don't know where I set them. <laughs> Anyways, there's so many in there. I have no fear that even if it didn't uh, work with winter sowing that I would could go ahead and, and sow them when it gets nicer. Um, yeah, I have these trays too that I could sew them in and then take them in and put them on my light shelves. So that's another thing. But I, I wonder how well this would hold up against the hot water. These are kind of thin. I could try one. I, they weren't very expensive. So I wanted to try those because I like, as I said before, I like sewing in trays rather than the individual cells because many times the plants are healthier. And that's just how it is. They are just come up healthier. I do have more petunias to sew. This one is the Wave Petunia Pink. I had this in barrels up in front. I will try to find that for you to show you. Beautiful. Filled those half wine barrels. Easy Wave Plum Pudding Mix. This plum pudding mix is gorgeous. So there's 10 seeds. So I wonder if this is cool enough to plant in. Probably. I could go ahead, because since they sit on top, I'll go ahead and put them. I know the bugs are dead in that now. Maybe I should give it another run through just in case, because I don't want to lose these. Yeah, I will, just because I'm going to be extra cautious now, <laughs> rather than being lazy. Alrighty, so those are the seeds that I could think of that I really enjoy winter sowing. I have a bunch out there already, and there might be some out there that I couldn't remember at, that I, let me go check. I'm gonna go check. Well, I did find one, Eryngium, also called Sea Holly. I have the white glitter out there, and then there was a blue one that um, I did. Now, I absolutely love Eryngiums. They are the biggest pollinator magnet you have ever seen, and very different pollinators too. And um, yeah, that does really well. But those I have to put in protected beds because the gophers really, really love them too. So those were a couple more. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any you've had great success with, any flower seeds, then please do share. I know there's a wide array. And usually the rule of thumb with winter sowing flower seeds, or any kind of seeds really, is if it's something that is hardy in your zone as a perennial and easily recedes itself. I have so many things out in my garden that recede themselves. It's what makes sometimes my gardening life so much easier um, because it really fills in in mass and that's what really gives your garden punch, a punch of color. I was just watching a garden show. I'm always watching gardening shows. But it was so amazing. This one garden gardener, head gardener of an estate. Well, it showed how he filled in, like there was the spring blooming flowers and they were in mass, but then they fade away when the summer heat arrives. Well, he digs them up and he pots them up, puts them aside somewhere where they'll be fine for the rest of the summer. And then he replaces them with the summer blooming. And I thought that was such a great idea for us with gardens, small gardens, but you really would like the continuous color because I've got the flowers for all seasons, but I, they're not in big enough bunches because I didn't have room for all of them. So when the cool weather ones were done, the hot weather ones would take over, but where the cool weather ones were was kind of just a drab spot. So I thought that was really kind of amazing. So I was thinking I might try that. So. Alrighty then, so I am going to go ahead and retreat these with the boiling water to make sure there's no more net gnats and continue on. So I will see you in the next video.